Hello, my quilting friends. My name is Leah Day, and welcome to Grace Company's Fantastic Fall Festival. I'm kicking off with a three video series called Basket Weave with QCT. We're going to quilt this basket weave quilt panel, mostly with QCT5 beginnings. So the first step to following along is to pick up this fabric panel from honestfabric.com. It comes with a throw sized quilt top and a smaller table runner, and also has enough extra red background fabric that you can cut it out carefully and use it for binding both projects. Now, in order to follow along, you will need the largest size panel that is 88 by 104 inches. And whenever you get it, what I want you to do is take it and give it a quick starch and press. So I applied starch to the right side of the fabric and then I pressed from the wrong side. What that does is that just encourages the starch to bond with the fabric nicely. You can skip that step if you want to by throwing the fabric in the dryer with maybe a wet washcloth. That'll take the wrinkles out too. I always starch and press my fabric simply to add that extra body and stability to it so it's easier to cut, easier to quilt, and it keeps the design nice and straight. As you can see here, this is loaded onto the frame perfectly straight, looks great. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fabric preparation I do at the very beginning. Now, Anna's fabric is 100% polyester. It's a woven polyester. It's super, super soft and it is color safe. So this is a great fabric to work with. And I love having the panel because of course it allows you to jump right in. You don't have to spend time piecing, finding fabrics, getting all of those individually prepped up. You can get straight to the good stuff, the quilting. Okay, so once I had my panel nicely prepped and ready to go, I cut out the throw sized quilt top by cutting around it a half of an inch from the outer orange and green border. So I left a half of an inch of the red fabric all around and then I cut out my table runner and I cut my table runner 14 inches wide by 72 inches long. I left a good bit of fabric here on the ends, but of course, if you wanted a bigger or smaller table runner, you can of course, trim this down uh, or expand it have a little bit more of that red background fabric around it that's fine too so make sure as you are trimming and cutting out the two quilts from this panel that you trim carefully nice and straight and square to the designs on, printed on the fabric so that way you can leave behind nice big long strips of fabric that will be used to create your binding so you will have binding for both projects that you can cut out piece together and I always cut that at two inches wide, just so you have that information too. So now that we have the panel prepped up, let's talk about the backing and batting. And I am using a 100% cotton batik fabric for my backing, and I am using 100% cotton flannel for my batting. Now, if you decide to use flannel as well, make sure to wash it in hot, hot, hot water a few times. Flannel has a lot of shrink to it, so that's definitely gonna be something you're gonna wash several times unless you want a really shrinkled, <laughs> wrinkled quilt. Uh, so I definitely washed that several times, got all the wrinkles out, got all the shrink out of it. Uh, my backing fabric, I just generally wash cotton fabric. That's just my habit. I did not wash my honest fabric just simply because I was kind of in a hurry, uh, but it is also washable, color safe, cold water wash, tumble dry. So that is the prep that I did on the backing fabric as well. I did have to sew it together because this is a fairly big quilt, sewed it together down the middle. Uh, and I also gave that a really good starch and press as well. I believe in pressing my fabric and applying starch because I find that that gives it more body, more stability that helps it go on the frame straight and square, keeps the quilt perfectly proportional, which is always my goal. It's one of those, I think, behind the scene kind of tips that I think a lot of quilters leave out. It's really, really important to your success. So now you know how to prep up your fabric and your quilt panel, let's talk about gear. This is always my favorite part. This is a 10 foot continuum frame. This is my favorite frame because it grows with you. Uh, I am going to expand it later this year to 12 feet. Uh, it started out as eight feet. So this frame has definitely grown with me quite a bit. 
Uh, now I have 10 feet here, which is more than enough room to put this quilt sideways. Uh, so it's a long ways loaded into the frame. And this is important because it's gonna allow me to have this much quilting space, basically a large amount of space to tackle with every time I advance the quilt through the frame. This makes quilting faster. The more space that you have to quilt in with every pass, the quicker you're gonna get your quilts done. I also have a Cunique 21, our big daddy long arm, which of course is giving me quite a lot of space from the back where my needle hits the back bar all the way to the front, where it's actually the motor that hits that back bar. So that's my limitation on how much space I have to quilt in going that way. Now I do have an extra rail on my frame that you won't have if you've just bought a continuum and you don't have an idler rail. So this is an extra rail here on the back. Typically the continuum only has one rail back here and the quilt will build up on that rail as you advance it through the frame. Now what happens is it, as it builds up, it's going to press against your machine bed and it's going to stop it from moving. So you have to go to the sides of the frame, unscrew some bolts and lift up that rail continually. Every time you advance the quilt, you've got to go fiddle with the frame. I got annoyed by that after a little while and I decided to add an idler rail. So now the quilt builds up way back here and higher. So it's no longer going to build up and rub up against my uh, surface of my machine. So I no longer have to do that fiddling. It does limit my space just a little bit. As you can see, as it comes back, the machine's gonna hit that idler rail before it would hit this rail. So I'm losing maybe an inch and a half of quiltable space, but I think that's absolutely worth it because I don't have to fiddle with my frame now with every time I advance the quilt. I really like that. Okay, so now you might be wondering if you can follow along with this quilt along if you have a different long arm and a different frame and the answer is absolutely yes. You can follow along with the Cunique 15, a Cunique 19 or a 21 or a 21 Pro. Any of these machines will work for this quilt along because the size of the design we're going to quilt is actually not very tall. Uh, most of the designs we're going to stitch are only going to be three and a half inches tall and any of those machines can stitch a design that tall. Uh, you can also use a home sewing machine if you happen to have a home sewing machine with a fairly large harp. And I would say anything from nine inches to 11 inches is going to be a fairly large harp. As long as you can quilt that three and a half inch design, you can use a home machine with this quilt along as well. Now you might be wondering if you can use a different style of frame for this project and the answer is yes. You can use our Q-Zone Hoop Frame or Hoop Frame Pro and a home machine. If you have that set up with QCT, then you can absolutely follow along. And the reason is the designs are going to only be stitched out at three and a half inches tall. And if your machine has at least a nine inch harp space, you should have enough space in the harp to be able to quilt these designs. You will need to first load the quilt on the frame and stitch all of the designs running in one direction. So let's say all of the uh, horizontal lines on the quilt and then take it off the frame, rotate it, and then quilt all of the designs that go vertical on the quilt. That way you're quilting always a space that's gonna be three and a half inches tall by anywhere from nine inches to 11 inches long. And you can absolutely do this on a hoop frame with a home sewing machine. The only thing that you will not be able to quilt on a home sewing machine would be our borders because our borders are a little bit taller of the design. However, you could always shrink that down a little bit and quilt your borders at four inches tall instead and then fill up the extra space around them with straight lines or a freehand quilting design. So understand that you absolutely can follow along with a hoop frame, with a home sewing machine. If you have QCT installed, you might have to just be a little bit creative when it comes to your borders. Now, as I went through this project, I learned a lot myself and I realized there was one setup that might have a little bit of trouble with quilting out all of the designs and being able to do the entire border as well. And that's a frame combination of an eight foot continuum with a Cunique 15. That would be the Cunique 15R or the Cunique 15 Pro. And the reason is the eight foot frame is not quite long enough to be able to turn the quilt so that it's long ways. 
And if you can't turn it long ways and you don't have enough space to quilt the designs vertically, then it's just not gonna work. So understand if you have that particular frame combination, a Cunique 15 on an eight foot continuum, and you may just have to mix it up and do something freehand, you know, just pick any quilting design that you like to stitch in the border or to stitch in those long vertical spaces. And this is something that I really wanna emphasize, and that is that I am constantly learning new things when it comes to these frames, what machines that you can use, how you can use them, and the limitations within that. And here's the thing, I absolutely believe in pushing your boundaries. So even if I'm telling you that I don't quite think that will work, that doesn't mean that you can't try it and just see what will happen. You might learn something new along the way, come up with a creative solution, such as adding extra lines, uh, extra design elements to those spaces and still be able to make it work. So don't feel like you can't join in the fun, you absolutely can. You may just have to create, find some even more creative solutions as we stitch this out together. Of course, the key to this project is not gonna be the machine that you're using or the frame, it's the software. And I am using Quilters Creative Touch 5, and the version that I am demonstrating is 5.05.29. So if your version is significantly older than that, you'll definitely want to upgrade your system. Uh, just run an update on it, so that way you can catch up with me and everything's gonna look the same. Of course, if something has significantly changed in the future, just make sure to check out your manual review those buttons. I'm sure it's not gonna change so much that you won't be able to follow along. And all of the designs that I'm gonna demonstrate in these videos are preloaded into QCT. They come with the software. You don't need to buy anything extra and they're all in QCT5 beginning. So you can do this on the starter level of the software. So that is pretty much it for the equipment I'm gonna be using. Now let's talk about actually loading the frame so that way you understand how I got it to this point. So the first step to loading the quilt in the frame is to attach your backing fabric to your leader cloth. And then I set my channel locks about two to three inches from the top of the quilt or from the leader cloth. I don't like to get too close to that, it might stitch through it. So I bring my, my machine down so that it's about, yeah, two to three inches or so. And then I spread out the batting. In this case, it was 100% cotton flannel. So I spread that out and then I got my machine into a nice position. So it's about a quarter of an inch from the edge of that flannel. Then I walk all the way around the frame and I'm gonna lock my channel locks. And I have to walk all the way around because the Cunique 21 is so big I can't reach forward and over the frame like I used to when I have uh, a Cunique 15. So it is a very, very big machine. So I have to go all the way around and I lock that in place. And the channel lock is over here on the side. Here's a picture of it. And I just clamp that down. And what it does when I lock that side channel lock is it stops the machine from going forward and back. It locks it so that it can only be pulled from side to side. So you know you're gonna get a nice straight line. So that's what I do, I lock that channel lock and then I select a baste stitch, baste stitch small, and then just push the machine real smooth, just real slow, real careful, all the way across. And I just line up that flannel so it's nice and straight all the way across the frame. Once I get to this edge and have all that stitched down, I go all the way off the edge of my backing fabric then I smooth out the flannel so it's nice and flat, and then I load my quilt top. So uh, this is, of course, not a top, it's a panel, but it's the exact same steps. Smooth it out, get it nice and flat, no wrinkles, no puddles, uh, no little blips or anything weird going on, and I get that lined up. So it's gonna be a quarter inch from that first line of stitching, from that first line of basting I just stitched. And then I don't have to mess with my channel locks again. I just line that up and I stitch back across another basting stitch, small. And visually I'm able to see if my quilt needs to be nudged or wiggled a little bit. I kind of try and, and wiggle it so it's nice and straight all the way across. And this is really key. Because, and this is a key, and I have to say, this is something that just kind of blew my mind <laughs> when I got into long iron quilting. And that is how 
difficult it is to maintain a quilt being straight and square when you're quilting on a home sewing machine or when you're off the system that is a frame. Uh, and I had an opportunity to do some hand quilting and I realized, you know, hand quilters used frames and kept everything nice and straight and square the same way. And it's a very different perspective when you're quilting on a home sewing machine pushing the quilt on the table because it's just not possible to keep things straight and square. But when you're on a long arm frame like this, it's possible to start out square to make sure that everything stays square as you advance the quilt through the long arm, through the frame. Okay, and this was something that actually came up and it was, it was a problem that I realized that my quilts were kind of flaring out at the end. They were kind of having a little, issues here and there. Uh, and I learned a lot from my friend, Janet George. Janet also shares videos on QCT. Uh, she has a great YouTube channel and she shared a lot about keeping your quilt straight and square to the frame. And I learned from her. And one of the tips that I learned was to base the quilt across the bottom rail, across this front uh, top rail. And so what I started doing, I need to go around and unlock my channel locks. I started doing a lot more based stitching so that way the quilt would stay more square. And I've already done this on this quilt panel. So basically what I do is I start in the middle and I bring the long arm down as close to me as it can get. So I'm basically just running off of the straight line that is the rail. I don't usually use my channel locks because in this case, I've got a ruler plate here on the long arm and that is rubbing up against that rail or actually I think it's actually yeah, it's the back of the machine that's rubbing up against that back rail. I trust that as a fairly straight line. So I can just simply start stitching and use that base stitch to lock a line all the way across. And then once I get here, kind of visually make sure that that edge is nice and straight and then change the channel lock so it's a nice straight line as set by the back channel lock and stitch straight up. So once I do that coming to the right, I do that again coming to the left. And because I've got so much room in the 21, I usually stitch right through the middle as well. So that is how I have started basting my quilts on the frame. It takes a little bit of time, you know, I mean, it is an extra step. But I gotta say, you know, by the time I reach the bottom of the quilt, before things were always kind of doing something a little funky. And this way I know that it's staying straight. This way it's staying straight across. My design is staying nice and straight. All of that is really, really good. So it takes, you know, it's just like fabric pre preparation. It takes a little bit of extra time to get started, but it makes everything that comes after that much faster, that much easier. So I hope that you will join me and jump right into the fun as we stitch this beautiful autumn basket weave quilt with QCT. Until next time, let's go quilt.